Okay. True confession, I love Miley Cyrus. <laughs> Every time I hike, I listen to her song, The Climb. You thought I was going to say wrecking ball, didn't you? <laughs> no, you know, it's not about how fast we get there. Well, sometimes it is. Or what's waiting on the other side. It's the climb, the journey, right? We get that here, don't we? We hike, bike, fish, ski, kayak, camp, hunt, and more. The active outdoors calls to us every single day. So you might be thinking, what does this have to do with forest bathing? What is forest bathing anyway? I'm often asked, do you do it naked? N no, actually it's a Japanese practice begun in the 80s called Shinrin Yoku and literally means being immersed in nature. You've been there, right? Standing alone in the woods or next to a peaceful winding creek at dusk or gazing mesmerized by the dazzling colors of rocks being reflected back to your unbelieving eyes, it forces us to slow down and somewhat calms all that keeps us awake at 2 a.m. Jobs, relationships, politics, politics, global warming, finances, <sighs> deep breath. All these things run continuously in the background of our conscious mind like open tabs on our computers. It's not easy to disconnect from that. So. Forest bathing is a tool to help us close the tabs and disengage from all of that. And there's more. Over the last 40 years, a body of scientific literature has emerged proving that being immersed in nature, forest bathing, reduces stress by improving our cardiovascular and immune systems as well as our mental health. We sort of knew that though, right? That's one of the reasons we are so intentional about our outdoor activities. We bag the peak, we backpack both on and off the beaten path, we return to our secret fishing spot. It's why we keep going back for more. We know we always feel better when we do. Our tendency though is to process everything we do by thinking, by learning. Still not sure what forest bathing is? Sometimes it helps to know what it's not. It's not a guided nature hike to learn more about trees or birds or rocks. These are great and I've led them myself, but it's not that. Well, then, is it mindfulness? Most of us are mindful as we uh, pursue our outdoor activities. I sometimes stand at the base of the M and ask her permission before hitting the trail. Or perhaps you've noticed a leaf on the sidewalk as you jog by and know it dropped there at your feet on purpose. These are beautiful, mindful practices, but forest bathing is not that either. In all of these great outdoor activities we love to do, we are still the actors. But in forest bathing, nature is the actor. Instead of us looking for the bird to identify, we sense that the birds are looking for us, perhaps checking us off their list. Okay, so how do we practice forest, forest bathing? First of all, we do it together and we do it alone. We gather, we form a sacred circle we are guided in being found. We are drawn to our sit spot alone. We listen, see, smell, touch, taste, and return to the circle to share. We repeat this and, offer, and then offer a tea ceremony or possibly a warm rock ritual where we consider a deeper lesson as we cradle the rock in our palm while listening to the myth of the stone child which speaks to the pain of abandonment. And then we return to our sit spot and let nature do a healing work in us. Or perhaps we consider that after the climb, we must descend like the free fall of water as it cascades from the top of the mountain drawn inexorably to the sea, picking up more and more oxygen as it tumbles along and sings its song in a chorus made of rocks until every stream, creek, and river ultimately merges into the ocean where it becomes indistinguishable from every other drop. We're not usually very good at letting go, but there's help. We're only just beginning to peek behind the veil of mystery of what nature has to reveal to us. Suzanne Samard in her book, Finding the Mother Tree, 
explains how many years of her own exacting research has disproved the old paradigm of trees competing with each other for light, water, and nutrients. It's just not true. Rather, she found that the trees collaborate, share, and care for one another, even trees of a different species, showing us that diversity is essential for all life, trees as well as humans. But sadly, we have too often believed the zero-sum game competitive model works for us too. Robin Wall Kimmerer, in her celebrated book, Braiding Sweetgrass, asked us, asks us to consider that plants, plants are the only living organism on the planet that makes its own food and then gives it away. Imagine, nature as the giver, the actor. So come along, leave the climbing for a bit, delight in the descent, listen for the call of the forest or the song of the stream. Breathe deeply the scent of the leaves and pine needles. Notice the brush of the wind on your skin. Go to the woods, prairie, mountains, or water, to the place that calls to you where you can immerse yourself in nature. But do it with a guide who can lead you in the process of closing the tabs. Do it intentionally. Come together, share, support, step away. Disconnect. Let the trees beckon you. Hold you, comfort you. Become like a child. No answers, no facts, no judgment, just wonder, amazement, and curiosity. Imagine.